Okay, now we'd like to look at some additional constructs that are supported within the process, and those are infinite loops, okay? So, well, actually, just loops in general. The process gives you three more basic conditional constructs that you can use to do cool stuff, functionality. The first one is just an infinite loop, and the keyword of it is loop, and then to end the loop, it's end loop. Now, when you get into an infinite loop and you, you go into a process, this is only exists in a process, you start a loop and then you just do assignments and then you loop forever. Okay? So when you do this, this is not synthesizable whatsoever. But it's very good for creating periodic signals. Okay? A periodic signal, as an example, might be a clock. Maybe you want a clock to say, let's assign clock to zero wait for 50 nanoseconds, then we'll assign it to a one, wait for 50 nanoseconds, and let's just sit in that loop and go forever, okay? You could obviously do that a bunch of different ways, but you could use an infinite loop to do it. It's perfectly fine because you're, gonna, you're not gonna synthesize and create a clock. A clock comes from an external crystal usually, okay? So the keyword is loop, and then you're gonna do end loop. But it does give you a construct when you could exit, if you ever wanted to exit, and, it, and the keyword is exit when, and you give it a Boolean condition. And then it also gives you a jump over, which is next, when. And let's look at how you would use that. So here's an example right here. I could create a process that I called clock proc one, and it's a process. Then I go begin. Notice there's no sensitivity list, okay? That means you are gonna jump into this process immediately. You're gonna trigger immediately. But that also means if you ever want your signal assignments to take place, you need to suspend it. The way to use suspend a process is using the wait statement. So in this situation, we're going to go begin loop. You immediately enter the loop, and you just say clock is it gets assigned not clock. So you just invert itself, and then wait for 50 nanoseconds. So every 50 nanoseconds, this thing is just going to do its thing. End loop, end process. The way that this works is it will continue in here forever, and you've just made a, a clock. Okay. Let's look at how you would quickly use. A make, create a clock that had an enable. So let's just say you had an enable signal, and whenever enable was one, the clock runs. Whenever it's zero, it doesn't run. Okay? The way that you could do that would be like this. I would say same thing. Process no sensitivity list, begin loop. Then what you would do is say check enable, and I'm going to use the keyword exit, and if I see this Boolean condition, I'm jumping out of the process. So let's say enable is zero. I would say exit when enable is zero. You would jump out of the process, end the loop, and then you would continue on your way. Now, in this situation that enable was one, what you would do is you would then sit here and say clock is not clock, wait for 50 nanoseconds. Thinking about way, the way that this is executed, all of these are within the process, okay? That means that one, you are going to sit in this loop right here. You're just going to sit in this loop, and clock's going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, forever and ever and ever. When you jump out, so enable is a zero. You jump out of the loop. You're not out of the process yet, so you still need to make an assignment. You don't want to leave the output that you're driving dangle. So these assignments right here are actually within the process. So in this situation, some logic might be, okay, I'll just if I ever get disabled. I'll just take clock to zero, and I'll just sit there forever until enable is asserted again. Okay? So this is kind of combining a whole bunch of logic that we have. We have triggering the process immediately. We have an exit when. We also have a wait for. And then down here, we have a wait until. So you're kind of combining all these different logic constructs that we have. Again, this is not synthesizable whatsoever. Okay? But it's just available to you. You want to know another loop you might be familiar with? You ever heard of a while loop? Pretty cool. What a while loop does, it's one of the first loops. No, I can't say that. I don't know if it was. <laughs> it's usually one of the first loops you cover. So you say keyword while, end, and then the end of it is end loop. And what it does is at the beginning of each loop, you check a Boolean condition. If that Boolean condition is true, the loop goes through once, then it comes back up and checks that condition again, and then if it's true, it goes through, goes through. Here's an example of that, okay? I have essentially the exact same functionality as I had in this last example. 
But instead, I'll use a while loop. I come into the process immediately, and there because there's no sensitivity list. I come down here and I say while enable is one loop. If enable is one, it's going to go through. Go ahead and go through this puppy one time, and then you're good to go. So I come down here, and I say invert the clock, wait for 50 nanoseconds, end the loop. This loop, this end loop, is associated with the while. So it will sit here forever as long as enable is one. And it will sit there, come into here, make, queue up the assignment, suspend the process, implement the assignment, end the loop, then immediately go back up, and it will look at the while again. So it sits within this, this while. The only time it ever exits is if the Boolean condition is false. If it's false, again, what we'll do is we'll jump out of the while loop, make a signal assignment, and wait until enable is asserted again. This is all within the same process. Okay, So it's all within the same process. While loops. Again, unsynthesizable in general. So you only use them for things like test benches, where you're creating stimulus patterns to drive into your circuit. All right, the final loop, which is a favorite, is the for loop. Everybody heard of a for loop? For loop is cool because it's a loop structure that is set up inherently to loop a certain number of times. Okay? You can implement counters, you can implement all sorts of things, but in general it follows traditional programming constructs where you start up and you say for and you create a loop variable, typically i or j or something, and that's going to increment or decrement every time you go through the loop. So then what you say is, it's a little bit different syntax in VHDL, what you do is you say in and then you give it the lowest level, lowest value, then two keyword, then you give it the maximum value or the highest you want to, and then you say loop. Okay? And what will happen is as you set those things up, it will sit in the loop for a certain amount of time. How's that feel? Yeah, why not? All right. You say, let's see an example of that. Well, let's just do a counter. I start off and I do the following. Process. No sensitivity list. In, that's inherently meaning this thing's not going to synthesize. I come in here and I say begin. And here's my for loop. I say for i. i is now a loop variable that is created of type integer. Okay? Then it's going to say in 0 to 15 loop. That means it's going to go through this loop. i is going to be 0, then i is going to be 1, then i is going to be 2, then i is going to be 3, all the way up to 15. It'll jump out of the loop and the process. In this situation, since we're making a counter, what we do is just say, why don't I just have a counter and I'll just assign the loop variable to it and then I'll wait for 50 nanoseconds. The wait statement was critical because you didn't have a sensitivity list. So you had no way to suspend or end the process. You simply needed to, you jumped into it, made an assignment, and then you had to suspend for this assignment to implement. Feel good? All right, life is good, life is good. And what happens? Let's just say that you sit in this loop right here. Here's the for loop. And you're going to sit in that loop. It goes through 16 times. What happens when it ends the loop? It will immediately end the process, and then what? It will immediately trigger the process again and go right back in. So this will go on forever. And what I mean by forever is the remaining time in your simulation. How's that feel? Okay, cool. So that is the loop structures that are supported within a process.